This is one of sport's great proving grounds, a gateway to glory where heroes are made. 30 tournaments spanning 18 countries on three continents. It's a 10-month campaign to determine the very brightest prospects in golf. Oh, he is right into this. Brilliant. That could just have sealed his promotion. What a way to do it. Along the way, a chance for the class of 2022 to expand horizons and sample life on tour. Welcome to my messy home this week here. I love the food, I love the wine. Finish the season in the top 20 on the road to Mallorca rankings and secure a golden ticket to the DP World Tour. That's the dream shared by all who compete on the Challenge Tour. If you're sitting comfortably, then we'll begin. Three weeks into the season and there's already been plenty to cheer. For starters, there was victory for German Alex Knapper at the Dimension Data Pro-Am. The Baines Whiskey Cape Town Open was claimed by JC Ritchie, the South African defending his title, before adding yet another just one week later at the Johnson Workwear Open in Durban. And so onwards we go. From the East Coast, we've journeyed inland past Lesotho to Bloemfontein. Backdrop to the Mangwang Open. There was no flight, so we drove a six and a half hour, but then we had a puncture. Yeah, two hours before Bloemfontein. <laughs> but we had a reserve tire and we changed it within 20 minutes. So we were so damn happy after that. But we arrived at 1.30 in the, in the night. So it was a long trip. We just went straight to the hotel, straight to the bed and slept for, I don't know, nine, ten hours afterwards and we were so tired yesterday. Each tournament so far in 2022 has been hosted across multiple courses and this week is no exception. Bloemfontein Golf Club and Schumann Park Golf Club providing the test this time. The last time I played here was, I think, 2014 Q School or 2013. Um, so I don't remember the golf course much. I had some range time before when I used my Trackman and I can see the ball is going so much further uh, than just last week because I think we are playing in a different height this week. I actually started enjoying playing down at the coast, <laughs> I'm spending four weeks down there now. Um, so yeah, it's a little bit of an adjustment just seeing the ball fly that far again. So visually just getting your eyes adjusted, but otherwise we'll be back to it pretty soon. With two victories already to his name, JC arrives here with a new target. One more win at any point this season would vault him automatically up to the DP World Tour. Back-to-back -back wins is amazing. Three in a row would be life-changing. That would just be a complete dream come true. Um, not just three in a season, three in a row would I, I can't even fathom it yet. Um, hopefully it happens. Irrespective of whether JC can clinch a third title in 2022, the South African remains comfortably atop the road to Mallorca rankings and on track for promotion either way. Alex Knapper and Chris Mivis, his closest challengers right now, the Belgian in particular riding high after back-to-back -back second places. A trio of South Africans close out the top ten as things stand, and on their heels are half a dozen more. The likes of Xander Lombard and Jaco Arles holding off challengers from France, Spain and England, while MJ Villone is the man currently in possession of the most precarious position of all. But without further ado, let's turn our eyes towards this week's contest. Day one at the Mangwang Open with Kit Alexander. It's a beautiful morning as Freddie's shot gets us underway with the first tee shot at Bloemfontein at 7 a.m. Over on the other course, Schumann Park, JC Ritchie, all eyes on the back-to-back -back winner from the last two weeks, a third win here, and it would be automatic promotion to the DP World Tour. Good try for Eagle there, and he's in contention once again. Fernando 
Lander started his day with a bogey, but he's fought back brilliantly. Two eagles and five birdies to this point. Just a little pitch up from the front of the green. And that's pretty nicely judged. He'll have that left for the birdie. Martin Simonson coming along well at five under par and needs a good week. Three missed cuts to start his season. Oh, fires it straight over the flagstick, spinning back towards it. And that might not have needed too many more rolls to have given the hole a scare for an ace. Mr. 58, Alejandro Del Rey shooting that stunning number in the Swiss Challenge last October, and he's on for another low one today. Can't quite get it into double figures. Simple tap in, though. That is a brilliant opening round of nine under par. Scott Fernandez then to get alongside Del Rey. And in it goes, coaxes it in the front door. Another fantastic opening round, well worthy of that beaming smile. Joining Fernandez and Del Rey at the top was Luke Jerling, the South African, matching the Spanish duo with an opening 63. His compatriots Justin Walters and Peter Muhlman also lurking. And that wasn't the end of local interest either, far from it. For one player in particular, this week very much representing a home match. Wilco Ninaba, back at his boyhood club. Celebrity status assured. This is where my parents and the house is still. I normally come here to rest. I set my alarm at night. I set it like for eight or nine because I just don't want to sleep the whole day. And then I snooze it anyways. But now I wake up at uh, 5.45 and I want to snooze it again, not realizing that I'm actually playing a golf tournament. It's really cool to see the golf course with the ropes and the TV towers. Cape Town and Dimension Data, having people there was, was really nice. So out here, hopefully I'll have some more rooting for me. So um, yeah, it's, it's gonna be really cool. It's just another golf tournament. I've got to try and figure out what I need to do or what I need to think about to give the same feeling of just a social round. If I get that right, it should be a really good week. That thing's good. No, <laughs> that's short, that <laughs> thing came back. I would definitely not be where I am if it wasn't for the Golf RSA national squad. The guidance and opportunities they gave us, playing the biggest events, the amateur events in the world, um, and not having any financial pressure on us while doing it, I mean, it's something I can't be thankful enough for. Great things have long been expected of Wilco, underlined by a stunning victory at the 2021 Dimension Data Pro-Am. Last year was one that I saw I made a little bit of mistakes with schedules. After winning Die Data, I got into events in the States. Uh, so spending two months in the States was not planned and that didn't help my playing rights in Europe at all. Scheduling is really important and that's why I'm here. I want to try and secure whatever I can secure as soon as possible and not have to scramble like I had to end of last year. And I know I've got full category on Challenge and Sunshine Tour. I'll get into a couple of DP World events. I really do think doing what I know I can and doing what I want to do um, combined will set up a good season. Thank you. Thanks, have a good week. Thank you. Enjoy your week. Thank you very much. And have Still a good the week. same course and Thank you. not so little guy. Clearly feeling at home. Wilco shared 17th place through 18 holes before heavy overnight rain and a three-hour delay impacted proceedings somewhat. Kit Alexander, though, for one, remained undeterred. Last time, Mile giving himself a really good angle here to the front right pin on the 10th at Bloemfontein. And he takes advantage of that, knocks it into about five feet for his birdie. Justin Walters now really popular on the tour. Birdies for Rhinos, Ambassador does a lot of charity work. And great to see that birdie find the bottom of the cup. He's going along well in contention here. We can see from the scores, 
receptive golf courses, yielding birdies. Luke Jerling, his approach here. It's over on the other course at Schumann. Handles that spin pretty well. Stays below the hole. Another really good opportunity to pick up a stroke. Well, MJ Villio, and he's local to the Bloom Fontaine area. He will know these golf courses well. Taking advantage of that local knowledge as well. Super touch there with his third on the par, 5-14th. Short-sided, but softer greens for Mulman. Slightly back into the breeze as well. Oh, such a simple action and very, very effective. to go to 14 under par. Oh, that's got to drop. Surely not. How has that stayed on the edge of the hole? Jerling, his birdie try on the par five. And he does move to 13 under par. Birdies at 16 and 18 lifted Villone to the summit come the conclusion of round two. Wilco Nienarber remained outside the top ten, but as you can see, plenty of his compatriots well positioned at this stage. It's nice to be at home. Lots of people I know around here, so, you know, it's nice to, to have the guys that support you. But still, like I, like I said, you still need to do the work and get the ball in all, yeah. Coming up, two tour newcomers have a roaring good time. To be honest, I'm a big, big fan of Lions. I can make that <laughs> And we find out who'll be king of the Challenge Tour Pride here in Bloemfontein. See you after the break. Welcome back to the Challenge Tour and to South Africa, where Bloemfontein provides the backdrop to event four of our 30 event season, the Mangwang Open. The opening two rounds have been jointly hosted by Schumann Park Golf Club and Bloemfontein Golf Club, as the latter now takes sole control for the weekend. Really enjoying it, really enjoying being here. We had a, a great time in Cape Town, great time in Durban last week, great time in Frankfurt the, the first week. So yeah, everything's going really well. If we can have this every year, it would be awesome. We just privileged and honoured, you know, for the Shanshan Tour and the Challenge Tour and the DP World Tour to join forces together so that we can have this opportunity to play. We kind of get stuck in the bad weather a lot back in Europe over winter, so it's great to be here. You know, it's uh, just, uh, I suppose, great to test yourself against, against some of the best players out here again. So, yeah, enjoying that aspect of it. And so, on a rather damp day three, back to the action with South Africa's own MJ Villone dominating through 36 holes. Once again, your guide, Kit Alexander. Villone holding the two shot lead, heading into the third round. This to save his par on the opening hole. Oh, and it just slides past. So, an early drop shot for our leader. Big expectations for him coming into the weekend, the local lad. And expectations with Richie as well, having gone back to back the last two weeks. Great approach into the 10th, and he will need it though. Scoring super low here, but he's in the mix. Jerling to get to 17 under. A look of disbelief. Well, that looked dead centre about six inches out. Just lacked the ounce of paint it needed to hold that line, though. So Jerling will stay where he is for now. Fernandez for a closing birdie. That drops, and it's two rounds of 63 for the Spaniard on this course this week. He sets the clubhouse lead at 18 under par. JB Kruger taps in his par on the ninth, his final hole. That is a course record. 61 for the 35 year old. Started on the 10th, came home in just 29 blows. Craig Ross 
to tie that number of 61 for the day and a three-shot lead. Disappointment, but still a fabulous 62. And that will be a two-shot lead for the Scotsman going into the final round. A huge 18 holes ahead of him as he goes in search of a maiden Challenge Tour title. Low scoring was the order of the day, in fact. Louis Albertser and Daniel Hillier moving into the mix with rounds of 63 and 62, respectively. But it's the Scott Ross on top through 54 holes. With the rain hopefully behind us, for now at least, an opportunity arose for a couple of our travelling pros, Freddie Schott and Nick Backham, to get to know the locals. Hello guys, we're at Zenshita Wildlife Rescue and we're going to feed the animals today. <laughs> we are pretty excited for the big lions. This is Zoltan, our blue-eyed boy. How old is he? He's, he's now eight years old. To be honest, I'm a big, big fan of lions and now to see them from close range and to see what all the people here are doing for the animals is just great. Like, some got hit by a car or like got sickness or injuries. Now they got a good life here and getting back on track. I think it's just great that the effort they're putting in is amazing. So yeah, I was just happy to, to see that. Where are we going to next? To the cheetahs. To the cheetahs. The cheetahs. Oh, it's going to be exciting. Freddie and me, we're living close to each other in Germany and played a lot of amateur golf in Germany, then international, now on the challenge tour. Please keep her head busy. He needs that arm to hit the ball. <laughs> <laughs> and now we're here on challenge tour, which is, which is amazing. So we were just talking about it. Uh, Lady, and we were like, okay, yeah, we, we should meet our, ourselves on, on DP Walter again. <laughs> so a lion can sleep up to 22 hours a day. A lion is living a pretty nice life, right? It's like we are having definitely a fun time. <laughs> and this is the world's fastest land animal. They can run up to 120 kilometers Ooh. over a short distance of 500 meters. How much do they eat? Roughly about two kilograms a day. Two kilograms of meat? Of meat only? It was quite tough at the beginning. I was very happy to have my friend Marshall Seam with me all the time. He helped me in, in certain situations I've never been before. So I had a good start, two top tens in the first three events, and just kind of like didn't know how to how to handle that. And he was always always by my side, helped me to to figure out how to manage that. And um, it was just a great experience, and I felt very very happy about the decision to turn pro. I'm kind of like grinding myself into it again and really enjoying it. I wouldn't say that there's a certain goal this year. I would love to see myself in the grand final on Mallorca because I think if you're in top 45, you have the chance of the last event of the year. If you win it, you're gonna, you're gonna make your card. So I think that that would be the main goal for me, yeah. I think it's great what you just built here. It's amazing. Back at the course, the break in weather proved sadly temporary, and damp conditions once more greeted the field come Sunday morning. Craig Ross leading the way, remember, the Scott two shots clear of the chasing pack, and Kit Alexander has the closing stages. Oliver Hunderball starting the final round, five shots behind the leader, Craig Ross. This for an early eagle on the third. Never quite got running at the hole with complete conviction. Jerling, his approach into the par five fifth. The green surrounded by water. He is carrying a bit of a shoulder injury, so that might explain the dropped club, but that is a stunning shot. Gives himself that for Eagle. The little grimace, they say beware the injured golfer. Kruger to get to 19 under par. Nicely done, you can hear the raindrops coming down. Real challenge keeping all the equipment dry out there this afternoon. Jerling to take advantage of that stunning approach shot. He does oh, moves to 21 under par. Really impressive battling performance from him today. Rainbow umbrella in the Rainbow Nation. Craig Ross dropped a shot early today, the leader. This to get it back. That steadies the ship nicely. Jamie Rutherford 
And that is challenged Torquart by winning the PGA Euro Pro Tour Order of Merit last season. And that birdie moves him into the top ten. Thunderbolt for birdie at the final hole. And he posts 21 under par. But it's a waiting game for him. Group's still out on the course. He can be caught or overtaken. Jerling, oh, he struggled up 18, has to hold this par putt to tie 21 under. Well, I think he knew early, didn't he, that he hadn't quite hit it. He was up and out of it. Streedham for birdie to force a playoff. Oh, left-hand turn at the cup. Obvious frustrations. So neither of our final pair could make the par or birdie they needed on the par 518 to tap in for Streedham. He will have to settle the second spot. And with that confirmation that a second consecutive 66 for a minus 21 total is enough for the fast finishing Hunderbolt to claim his first Challenge Tour victory at the Mangaung Open. And his compatriots and friends got the celebrations going. A six under par final round of 66 saw Lars van Mael sneak into the top 10 come the final reckoning. A score matched by the man of the moment. Overall champion, Oliver Handeball. Feels amazing. I didn't believe it actually. After I came in, I didn't think about it was enough. So, yeah, they made a little show on the last hole. So, it's good for me, but not so good for them. Yeah. It's so amazing. First time down here. Yeah, it's a nice country. So, after another fine week in South Africa, and after four weeks on tour, let's see how the road to Mallorca rankings are settling down. Wilco Ninaba used home advantage well to gain a place. One of a cluster of South Africans making their presence felt inside our top 20. This week's biggest mover is Luke Jerling of 107 places, and courtesy of this week's win, Oliver Hunderbol leaping straight into fourth spot. Messrs. Mivis and Kanapa are unmoved in the top three. Behind the man still setting the early pace on the road to Mallorca, dual winner JC Ritchie. So, with that, after another roller coaster week on the Challenge Tour, we bid farewell to Bloemfontein. Our class of 2022 takes a welcome early term break now for a fortnight rest and recovery before the season resumes at the SDC Open in Limpopo. So join us next time as the quest for promotion to the DP World Tour continues.